Thank you again for joining us for this Sunday's Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service. And on the uh, hazardous weather graphic uh, for tonight, blizzard warning continues here western Arctic coast. Uh, as winds continue to gust 40 to 50 miles an hour and blowing snow reducing visibilities to near zero at times uh, in areas along this zone. And back uh, to the southeast, uh, winter weather advisories for uh, blowing snow from the Kobuk, Noatak Valleys, northward across the Western Brooks Range. Uh, not quite as bad as the warning area, but still gusts uh, 30 to 40 miles an hour and uh, visibility is down to possibly half a mile. And there's now uh, <clears throat> a winter weather advisory here for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. Uh, that kicks in later tonight and uh, lasts through tomorrow uh, for the same conditions, uh, snow and blowing snow, winds gusting as high as 45 miles an hour, and uh, that will reduce visibilities at times to a half mile. Also, uh, pretty good wind chills with that, uh, with temperatures down 15 to 20 below zero this afternoon. Moving on to the satellite imagery, you can see a uh, system here gradually uh, trying to push northward, pushing some clouds in over the southern southeast coast. Uh, not too much in the way of precipitation. Uh, whatever fell today was down in this area, the main producing clouds still over Dixon entrance, but there was a little bit of a shower activity or light rain that made it up into the southern areas, most of push off to the east, clearing out over the north here with uh, uh, clear skies and drier conditions, few isolated rain or snow showers, the Akatat reported rain shower this afternoon. Also some of that here over the North Gulf Coast and looks like into southern Prince William Sound, leftover moisture from that dissipating system over Kodiak and just leaving some clouds and uh, light precipitation behind. Otherwise, uh, pretty good out here to the southwest and to the north. Uh, cold temperatures here, that's why the ground is showing up as white. Uh, that's uh, temperatures below zero. That extends into the Northwest Territories. Otherwise, uh, kind of a break going on here out over the uh, northern and eastern Bering Sea. Uh, still some clouds around the Pribilof. And then this big storm out here, and that uh, very active, uh, rather strong front bringing storm force winds of the western central Aleutians today and uh, seeing gusts uh, anywhere from 60 to 70 miles an hour with this with rain that's uh, spreading in uh, past Atka now extending back to the west uh, to about Shimia and you can see the front slowly moving northward here and a little bit to the east we'll see on uh, today's graphic at uh, 3 p.m. it's right about in this position here the 954 millibar low uh, just to the south now and that tight pressure field right across the western and central Aleutians. Uh, less wind here of course off to the east over the Alaska Peninsula. A couple of weak troughs here this one quite weak a few scattered rain and snow showers the Alaska Peninsula back up to the northwest and this the remnants of that uh, frontal boundary from uh, earlier on yesterday and uh, last or the night before last here across the southwest interior uh, still possible snow showers around the Kodiak Island or on Kodiak Island back to the northwest here scattered back up across the Seward Peninsula St. Lawrence Island amounts very light through here definitely not everyone saw any precip saw precipitation some a lot of areas didn't and then there's the uh, blowing snow gradient tightens again Arctic high up over the Arctic and uh, trough down to the south keeps those uh, Easterly winds gusting as high as 50 miles an hour, say at Point Lay, and the low visibilities uh, extending to the southeast again, and that'll begin to increase the winds here as this gradient tightens tonight uh, for the Arctic coast. Otherwise, uh, weakening low here, shifting away from Kodiak, uh, brought some areas of light snow in over the uh, southern and eastern Copper River Basin today. Not much uh, mounts on the light side there. Again, rain and snow showers scattered along the North Gulf Coast. And then for tonight, uh, the system down to the south kind of hangs in the area there. So again, a threat of uh, showers or light snow or rain here persists over the southern panhandle. Drying in the north, look for those winds that begin to increase there. Northern Lynn Canal and Glacier Bay uh, later tonight. 
and uh, colder air coming in, drying conditions there. Still some persistent snow showers here along the North Gulf Coast, or rain and snow showers. This action out here diminishing gradually, and uh, again, the snow, snow and blowing snow along the Arctic coast, otherwise clear and cold. Temperatures just down to maybe 35 below over the Yukon Flats. Big storm out here over the uh, Aleutian, southern Bering, the low center south of uh, Adak, 950 millibar low, wind and rain spreading eastward across the Fox Islands. And then for tomorrow, that uh, front shifts northward a little bit, begins to weaken here, but still good for gale force winds, give or take there for the Alaska Peninsula, periods of rain up to the Perbolofs, stormy out over the Aleutians at the main low center, colder air, snow, pretty good northerly winds out there for the uh, far western Aleutians. Still some clouds, isolated snow showers here over the southwest interior, clear and cold over the interior, and uh, drying out that low finally pulling out, but it'll keep a thread of moisture over towards Stewart and Hyder and possibly a net through the afternoon. And uh, actually it uh, just shifts southward and that thread of snow showers continues, actually picks back up again on uh, Tuesday and Tuesday afternoon. Strong winds over the northern southeast coast, northern half back over to the west there, and then diminishing here as you get to Copper River Delta. A little breezy there over the eastern Alaska range areas, and some snow chances show up along the southwest coast, uh, down to possibly Kodiak, and snow showers start to increase a little bit here, along with the clouds there along the southern coast of the Kenai Peninsula to the Barren Islands. And looking at the lows for tonight, uh, again, 25 to 35 below for the most part here with the east and northeast interior, 15 to 20 below along the Arctic coast to go along with those uh, 45 mile an hour winds and my, or 10 above to 20 above Seward Peninsula from Kotzebue Sound near the freeze point there for Tsavunga and 35 for the Pribilofs, upper 30s for the Aleutians except uh, Shimmy on the backside of the low with 33, 30s for the Alaska Peninsula 20s uh, over the uh, Bristol Bay zone. Highs for tomorrow, lower to mid 20s south central Alaska 30s near 40 for the Panhandle, near 40 for the Alaska Peninsula and the Aleutians, well below zero. Teens and 20s below for the highs here over the eastern and northeast interior, and about 10 below for the Arctic coast. And moving on to Tuesday's lows, a little chillier here, anywhere from 35 to 45 below zero across the eastern interior. Uh, Northway Toke uh, getting down there around 40 below, as well as Eagle, and the Yukon Flat Shock Yitzik, uh, certainly could see minus 40 as well as Arctic Village, and uh, near minus 20, either side there for the entire Arctic coastal zone, and below zero uh, for the northwest coast as well. There's a unal cleat with zero, and the northern Cuscombe Valley, low minus 20s, milder plus side 20s there for Bristol Bay, and mid-30s for the Aleutians. Highs for the afternoon, shaping up like this. Uh, 30s near 40 for the Aleutians, Bering Sea, below zero over the eastern interior, quite cold here on down into the Copper River Basin. And after the break, I'll be back with the marine forecasts. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Moving into uh, the flying weather section, a lot of IFR here uh, from the northern Bering Sea, St. Lawrence Island, the Bering Strait, all the way down across uh, Yukon, Cuscoan Delta, Nunavak Island, on into Bristol Bay. Then back to uh, marginal VFR over much of the Bering Sea, the Aleutians, more IFR, that next storm, uh, that big storm out to the west there, uh, mostly near and west of ADAC. Otherwise, VFR, nor or Arctic coast uh, from the Arctic, all the way down into south central Alaska. Marginal VFR here uh, starting the day out from about Cape Yakutag and across Prince William Sound, southern coast of the Kenai Peninsula, the Kodiak Island. And with that system down to the south, it's slowly moving out. Uh, you start out with marginal VFR over the southern southeast coast and possibly here over toward uh, Northway. And then for the afternoon, tomorrow afternoon, that blows out to sea here with those northeast winds, colder, drier conditions uh, coming around with that high. And you can see VFR right out to Nunavak Island there near Makoriuk and IFR on the decrease to St. Lawrence Island, but uh, lingering here over the southwest mountains. Marginal VFR Kodiak Island, right along the North Gulf Coast. Now all the panhandle, that system pulls off to the south and east enough that your VFR from Dixon Entrance all the way up to Lynn Canal, well, White Pass, Chilkoot and White Pass. So for Tuesday morning, looking like this now, some IF, or marginal VFR uh, shows up right along the coastline, otherwise staying VFR. Marginal VFR up along the North Gulf Coast, Southern Kenai Peninsula with the IFR staying offshore. VFR, all of the interior still, IFR down here over the southwest mountains and then back to Nunavak Island and the southern side of the Alaska Peninsula 
and IFR out over the southwest bearing and around ADAC. For Tuesday afternoon, we've got IFR here over the northern Bering Sea up to St. Lawrence Island, just touching the west coast of Nunavak Island. Uh, VFR very close to the Pribilofs there, especially St. George with marginal VFR for the Aleutians and marginal VFR, Gulf of Alaska. Again, looks like it makes a little bit of a, uh, edges up into Prince William Sound, especially the western areas, Kenai Peninsula, and uh, back in across the southeast coast. For Anatovic, VFR, same forecast for Radigan. All the pass is looking really good tomorrow, wide open. Lake Clark, Merrill, rainy, uh, windy, VFR, and uh, Isabel, Mentasta, St. Louis Visibilities, unlimited, most of these areas. Tanita as well. And for Portage, good VFR. Uh, actually, Portage might start out marginal uh, early, but uh, looking VFR definitely by mid-morning, if not sooner. Chilkoot and White uh, VFR, back to VFR finally. And for the uh, freezing levels at the surface here, coming down now, colder air coming in with those gusty north winds as that uh, thrust of Arctic air comes down from the Northwest Territory. So at the surface here, down toward Dixon entrance, uh, Prince of Wales Island, I mean, with 2,000 feet near Dixon entrance, at the surface through Shelikoff Strait, and then back up along the coastline here, 2,000 feet in over the central Aleutians to about Mikulski. Icing looking like this, uh, above 5,000 feet, light to very isolated, moderate rime icing here for the Alaska Peninsula, that elongated boundary of moisture out across the Pribilofs, wrapping back around western Aleutians in across uh, the central areas to about Mikulski. And then for the uh, jet stream, Strong jet here, southwesterly splits right here, weaker branch, 40, about 80 knots coming over this big upper level ridge. Northerly is coming down, uh, pretty good 70 to 90 knots right into the uh, eastern North Gulf Coast along the border, trough right through here. And uh, now we'll begin to pick those winds up there in the northern part of the southeast coast. And for uh, 9,000 feet, looking like this, uh, not too bad on the winds at this elevation, just uh, five to 15 knots here across the panhandle and even lighter, uh, just about no wind at all along the North Gulf Coast, but a pretty good uh, batch of wind or swath of wind here through the interior, northeast turning east, uh, 20 to 25 knots, eastern Arctic coast, southeast 30 to 40 knots there, Alaska Peninsula, and along the southwest coast, and then easterly is at about 40 there for the Pribilofs, 35 knots on the eastern edge of this uh, system, and then back to the west and northerly is 25 to 30, and at 3,000 feet, good flow here, 30, 25 to 40 knots into the interior, southeast up to 50 ahead of that system in the Bering Sea, and uh, maybe 25 knots there, mostly into the Queen Charlotte. I don't think wind will be a factor at all over the panhandle with that thing moving through. Turbulence-wise, strong winds in the interior. Look for uh, widespread, moderate chops, especially for small aircraft below 5,000 feet, from, uh, right, especially right along the Alaska range into uh, the northern panhandle. All of the Aleutians, the southwest coast, particularly Togiak Bay, moderate chop on up to uh, Cape Ramonzoff, and uh, also for the Pribilofs. When you think of a national park, you probably envision wide open natural spaces undisturbed by human activity. There are indeed such places, but even in some of the most remote areas of a place like Kenai Fjords National Park in Alaska, the mark of man is present. Marine debris is a menace to the farthest reaches of our globe, and even designated national park lands are not immune. In the summer of 2009, the Resurrection Bay Conservation Alliance, a grassroots conservation organization based in Seward, Alaska, decided to do something about the marine debris fouling the beaches of Kenai Fjords National Park. Marine Debris Coordinator Tim Johnson had first-hand experience with the issue. The summer before, uh, my wife and I, Michelle, had done a paddle from Seward, a uh, sea kayak paddle from Seward to Homer. Really, our eyes were open to some areas that we didn't realize there was so much accumulation. It was very deceiving up front. You couldn't really get a feel for the, the extent and impact of it. You've got this, this, this nice high tide line that's quite pristine, and you really don't get a picture for the, the impact, the amount of uh, debris in that area until you get behind those storm berms. You get back into the lagoons and the, the vegetation around those lagoons. And then you see the, the absolute extent back into that veg and how intertwined and enmeshed 
on these decades of trash deposition. So we were just appalled by that and said we could, we got to put some, we got to get something together on a larger scale. The Resurrection Bay Conservation Alliance is a local um, nonprofit community organization, and they have been instrumental in helping um, the Park Service obtain funding to to get uh, a boats, larger boats, to help move the debris, and they get volunteer labor and organize the work trips. And so it's really a partnership between the Park Service and the community to help get out and really get a project done that, in and of itself, any one group couldn't do on their own. Most of that trash was baggable, however, there were large items, huge you know, piles of hauser line, uh, for example, that you know, we just had to hoist up onto the boat. The volunteers didn't just bag, haul, and hoist the garbage, but also carefully recorded what types of debris were collected. In many ways, the debris itself is a resource. Um, archaeologists use middens, the trash heaps, um, as a way of analyzing past cultures, and in one sense, Marine debris is a form of a midden. It's a trash heap that left for the future would be something that people could use to analyze our cu culture. It may not say the best things about our culture or everything that we want, but we need to be able to document what we've done um, so that we can preserve that legacy, um, make sure that we as a society don't forget what we've, what we've been doing. We had two larger categories of, of, of marine debris that we picked up. Um, commercial fishing um, means like, um, say, uh, gill nets, um, large hauser lines, anything that, that would be associated with more of a commercial fishing scale. And then the second category was, was more recreational fishing and household, you know, which would be you know, general plastics, um, you know, things like that. Um, so we had about a 75% of the commercial fishing uh, marine debris element, and about 25% of the recreational and household further out the bay, and we had the exact opposite the closer we got to Seward uh, within the bay. It was about 25% commercial uh, fishing versus 75% recreational fishing and, and household. The trash is not just unsightly for park visitors, but also poses threats to wildlife and marine habitat. Really one of the larger issues now that you go to this plastic that has, uh, can really get into the food web and affect the food web differently than something like glass. These substances, for instance, all these polystyrene blocks that are breaking down into all these little crumbly bits are, are further breaking down on a microscopic level and uh, how much of an impact that has you know, in this ecosystem is yet to be determined, but I think it's got pretty high potential. You know, well known that sea turtles will eat plastic bags floating in the water. They look like jellyfish to a sea turtle, and um, obviously a plastic bag doesn't uh, go well in the digestive system of a turtle. Um, albatross will see small pieces of plastic floating on the surface and think they're small fish and other food sources and eat that in their stomachs, especially in some of the um, northwestern Hawaiian Islands, it, they, they'll find dead albatross that have starved to death with a full stomach and it's full of pieces of plastic. 
we're affecting our local areas this way, um, but we need to be thinking about it from more of a state and, and, and global international uh, scale. And, and most importantly, to, to try and focus on prevention of it coming in in the first place. Because we're just going to see this continuing you know, to build up on our beaches unless we're able to, to get a little bit more of an approach on, on prevention on the front end. Marine debris is really a global problem, um, you know, in all the oceans, and you know there are many different sources. Global shipping is one. Fishing debris from commercial fishing, um, recreational boating activity, activity on land, stuff blowing off land, washing down streams, people just throwing stuff on the shore. Though the problem can seem overwhelming, Johnson remains upbeat about making a positive difference. No, you gotta you gotta start locally. You gotta you know take control of what you can do, and 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 make something with that, and and try and you know move on from there. Overall, more than nine tons of debris was removed from the beaches of Kenai Fjords National Park and transported back to Seward to be deposited in a landfill. People gave a lot to the project in order to make it happen. That was um, awesome. One of the most amazing experiences I've ever um, had. Be able to put that that large of a group of volunteers together, dedicated um, volunteers to put that much effort and, and give that much time and pull all these the different agencies together to see it all happen um, was, yeah, was, was incredible. It was really incredible. Yeah, very fulfilling um, experience. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Uh, looking at today's sea ice analysis, not a lot different from yesterday. Still seeing it uh, fill in here through the Bering Strait and edging southward towards St. Lawrence Island. This area along the west coast expanding slowly out to the west and continue to see an increase in the sea ice over northern Cook Inlet. And moving on to the uh, coastal water forecast here for the southern southeast coastal areas, uh, north to northwest, 20 knots with 12-foot seas up to the north here, uh, coming around to the northeast and then east at the same speed. Big increase in the winds here uh, over the northern inside waters, Lin northern Lynn Canal, 40 knots with gusts to 55 tomorrow. Gales even out for Stevens Passage from the north. McLaren Strait uh, north at about 15 to 3-foot seas. And then for the uh, Tuesday outlook, northwest 15 on the south coast. That will be the lightest wind area by far uh, next to the 20 knots there at uh, Clarence Strait with the gust 40. But 45 out of the north, Stevens Passage, gust 65 knots. Storm warnings out for northern Lynn Canal or Lynn Canal with uh, gust of 50 or, or sustained 55 knot wind, 16 foot seas. 40 knotters here for the north coast right out of the east and seas 11 feet. For Cook Inlet, northeast 10 tomorrow, picking up about 20 knots uh, south of the Forelands, right into Kachemak Bay, north 15 for the Barrens. Light north to northeasterlies here for the North Gulf Coast, but uh, look for gusts 30 knots coming out of the Copper River Delta. And for uh, Prince William Sound, northeast of 15 with two foot seas. Next day, uh, increase it to about 20 knots there for the Sound with three foot seas. Small craft advisories here for the North Gulf Coast, east 25, eight to nine foot seas across the Barren Islands. Northeast 30 uh, for Kachemak Bay, right up into Southern Cook Inlet, and Northeast 20 there for Northern Cook Inlet with five foot seas building as high as 10 feet there for Kachemak Bay. And for Kodiak Island, uh, tomorrow pretty light winds in the forecast, South 15 there along the east side, Shelikoff Strait, Northeast 15 knots, and Sitkanak down to about Castle Cape or Chignik, southeast 30 knots, and east 25 for Bristol Bay. Small craft advisories there, and full gales here for the Alaska Peninsula, southeast becoming east on the Bering Sea side at 40 knots. Those fall back to 25 the next day, but these seas here still pretty high, 26 feet with those southerlies at 25 knots here, and then east at 30 knots for Bristol Bay, and southwest of Kodiak, not too bad. Uh, behind the front there, southeast 15, and then 20 to 30 knot winds there for Shelkoff Strait and east side of Kodiak. 
for the uh, Fox Islands tomorrow. Uh, pretty windy, almost a storm, but not quite. Southeast 40 to 45 knots with seas 15 to 28 feet. And uh, gales here back into the uh, west at about 35 to 40 knots for Atka and Adak. And for the, uh, then they fall back a little bit here and then pick up again on the backside of that low, that colder air surging southward. Seas build to 25 feet with 45 knot winds. And then for the uh, Aleutians on Tuesday, northwest 40 here, pretty general, right in toward Adak. From Adak uh, here eastward, uh, well actually south of the islands, west 25, north side east 20, and south to southeast 30 knots for those eastern zones. Southwest coast, 30 to 35 knot winds, uh, gale south of Nunavak Island, uh, high end gales here for the Pervilovs tomorrow, east 45, 40 knots, St. Matthew Island, 25 for St. Lawrence. And then on the next day, 30 knot winds here all along the coast, south of Nunavak Island, though holding on to a gale. Easterlies, 30 knots, 14 to 17 foot seas to go along with it. And the Arctic coast, uh, first wind advisories here, uh, everywhere along the Arctic coast, out of the east, 25 to 30 knots, all the way over to Cape Beaufort. And then falling back to 20 knots here, Cape Beaufort to Cape Thompson, then back up to 25 from there on down to the strait. And for Tuesday, east 30 knots here for the uh, zone from Wales to Cape Thompson. And then lightening up now, uh, really coming down the wind. So definitely the blizzard warning will be over by Tuesday, if not sometime tomorrow. East 25, brisk wind advisory central and all the way east to demarcation point with 30 knot winds, a little windier on that east end. And for tonight again, snow showers diminish in the uh, west here, clear and cold over the interior, increasing winds northern panhandle, and chance of snow or rain showers down south. Big storm uh, front coming in with the uh, strong winds in the Fox Islands, shifts into the Alaska Peninsula tomorrow with rain, and uh, pretty stormy out across the Aleutians. Uh, clouds in the west, clear and cold in the central and eastern interior, and drier and colder over the panhandle, and windier, especially north, into Tuesday. Uh, same pattern there, still a risk of snow showers down south along the North Gulf Coast, clear and cold over the interior. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. <laughs>